Happy Friday, folks, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting March 3rd, 2014. The three stories this week include a farming campaign targeting small home office routers, news of the latest big network breaches, and a nation state level advanced targeted attack that allegedly comes from Russia. Let's start with the Soho router farming campaign. If you haven't heard the term Soho, it stands for small office home office. And a Soho router is typically the type of device you get from an ISP or you might find in a consumer network that routes traffic to the internet. And by the way, farming refers to a class of attack where the bad guy can redirect your traffic going to one website to another website. And they do this by hijacking DNS, domain network system. And this is really the phone book of the internet. Anyways, a security intelligence organization called Team Cymru discovered a big uh, Soho farming campaign that attackers have been launching primarily against European and Asian victims. Essentially, they noticed that bad guys had hijacked over 300,000 different routing devices. And these devices range from Zyxel equipment to TP-Link equipment and to D-Link equipment and a few others. According to Team Cymru's reports, bad guys used vulnerabilities, whether they're uh, authentication bypass flaws or a web application flaw called a cross-site request forgery flaw to gain access to the administration pages of these small office home office routers. And they used this access to reconfigure the DNS for these routers to point to some evil DNS servers. And by doing this, the bad guys redirect all your DNS lookups. For instance, if you're trying to go to google.com and you're trying to find the IP address associated with that, the bad guy actually controls the real address you go to. And this allows bad guys to do man-in-the-middle attacks. They can gain access to any website you go to, and they can redirect you where they want to, or they can fish you, or they can just kind of proxy your traffic so that they can see everything you do. Now, Team Cymru has a lot of fascinating detail in their report on this, which I'll post in our blog post associated with this video. Uh, for instance, as I mentioned, the attack seems to target European and Asian customers, but most of the victims were found in Vietnam and a few other countries. So how do you protect yourself from this? Well, first of all, you should definitely patch your consumer routers. If you use a routing device, it has firmware, and that firmware needs to be updated. Also, you should heavily restrict who has access to the administrative pages on your security security device. Now in one case these bad guys used something called a cross-site request forgery attack, in which case they had to get you, someone within your network, to click a specialized link. And by doing that, even if you prevent outside people from accessing the administrative pages, you have access to the administrative pages. So when you click this link, you actually become vulnerable to them gaining control of the administrative pages. So that's where patching really helps. The other thing I want to quickly point out is WatchGuard actually released during RSA a new appliance called the Firebox T10. And this is really a small office, home office appliance that's, that's kind of targeted towards telecommuters. And for only $400, $395, you can actually get a security hardened routing device that has full unified threat management. That means it's a firewall, it has intrusion prevention, antivirus, application control, uh, reputation services, URL categorization, and many other security services that go well beyond the protections that most Soho routers have. So for a very little amount of money, you can get full enterprise protection. So if you're kind of worried about protecting your home office, check out watchguard.com to read about the Firebox T10. 
My next topic this week is some pretty big network security breaches, including some that disclose some credit card information for customers. During the week, there were three stories of some pretty big network breaches. One of them affected Smuckers, the company that makes jams and fruit spreads. Another one affected Sally Beauty, a beauty supply company. And finally, Comixology, a, a company that provides digital comics, also suffered a computer breach. Now, I'll talk least about the Comixology breach. That one didn't disclose any credit card information. All you need to know is if you use Comixology, go change your password. However, I'll post links to all these stories on my blog, and the two big ones, the Sally Beauty one and the Smuckers ones, were disclosed by uh, Brian Krebs, the guy that writes for Krebs on security. And the only breach I wanted to talk about in detail is really the Smuckers breach. The reason I want to talk about the Smuckers breach is it's kind of different than the breaches we've seen in the past. In many of the big network breaches where credit cards are stolen, it's either a SQL injection where bad guys use flawed web code to gain access and download your SQL database, or in the big target breach, we talked about how the bad guys targeted point of sale systems and they got malware on point of sale systems to steal credit cards. But this Smuckers breach is actually kind of different. In the Smuckers breach, the bad guys actually got malware on Smuckers' online e-commerce web server. And rather than trying to steal data from the SQL database, they actually took advantage of flaws in these web applications to monitor uh, users making online purchases as they were entering information into Smuckers' online e-commerce server. So it's slightly different than a SQL injection attack and is very different from, from point of sale malware. In fact, it's more like the kind of traditional banking malware you usually see on endpoint clients. You know, uh, botnets like Zeus, they use man in the browser attacks where they put little hooks into your browser and they steal information as you're entering it into your banking site. It's really the same type of attack, but rather than being on your client and your browser, the actual malware was on Smucker's server. In any case, again, the takeaway for this is if you use any of those sites to make online purchases, uh, change your passwords. And finally, if you use Sally Beauty or, or you purchase from Smucker's online, specifically if you purchased online from their website between November and December, you might need to change your credit card or check with your credit agencies for any fraudulent activity. So the last story I want to share this week is news of yet another nation state level advanced targeted attack. And this story comes from a security company called GData who've called this attack Ouroboros, which is named after that snake that eats itself, which is a symbol of a lot of mythologies. In any case, what makes this advanced is a number of things. First of all, the malware arrives as a rootkit, which is a combination of, of a system driver and a virtual file system, which I'll talk more about in a second. Now, being a rootkit, this, this arrives as a kernel level driver that can actually hide itself on your system very, very well. It also uses this virtual file system to help to hide itself from any sorts of security programs that scan file systems for malware. Another interesting aspect about this malware is the fact that it uses an internal peer-to-peer -peer communication mechanism to try to infect other computers within the victim's network even if they don't have an internet connection. Now, of course, like all modern malware, this particular infection has a command and control channel. It needs an internet connection to share the data it might be stealing with the attackers. But it also does scan internal networks, and it can infect computers inside the network that don't have direct internet connections of their own. And the way it exfiltrates data from those internal connections is by using another victim inside the network as a proxy. So if it has even one computer that has an internet connection, that can become the proxy to exfiltrate all the data from your non-connected computers as well. Another interesting tidbit that seems to suggest this is an advanced nation-state attack is that this new particular malware checks its victim to make sure it isn't already infected by another threat called agent BTZ. And Agent BTZ is an other nation state of uh, threat that came out in 2008 that seemed to be targeting the US Pentagon and other US nation state uh, uh, targets. And by the way, this may not actually be a new attack, it just may be newly discovered. According to G data, some of the modules in this malware were created in 2011, so it may just be that the good guys are just now discovering a much older threat. And finally, the big news 
news here is according to G-Data, they suspect the Russian government may be associated with this malware. They've identified a lot of Russian language in the particular malware. If you're interested in all the details, I'll be sure to post the report in our blog post associated with this video. But it is showing that malware is continuing to advance, and some of this malware is very evasive to old security techniques. If you rely on reactive signature-based anti-malware or antivirus solutions, you might start to think about more proactive security technologies to help protect your organization. So that's it for this week, but as usual, there's a ton of other security stories. In fact, one was Microsoft's advanced notification. So don't forget, next week is patch day and Microsoft will release five security bulletins, including one that fixes a zero-day IE flaw. If you want to know about all these extra stories, be sure to check the reference section in the blog post associated with this video. And while we're talking about the video, last week I attended RSA and I did not post a video. And if you only have found this podcast on YouTube, you may not be aware that on WatchGuard Security Center, there is a blog post that details a lot of interesting stories beyond what I talk about. And last week when I didn't post a video, I did do a text-based summary where I talked about last week's stories. So if you're only visiting on YouTube, be sure to check out WatchGuard Security Center for some other security-related blog posts and text-based blog posts when I do miss the video. While we're talking about ways you can follow me, don't forget you can see me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, and you can also follow my company at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.